benefits. In continuation to my earlier talks about how the infection progresses within the urinary tract, uh, in this video I want to talk to you about the second aspect and that is what allows the bacteria to invade urinary bladder. What is there in the bacteria which makes it so strong, so pathogenic that it is capable of creating nasty infection. These are called the natural bacterial strengths. If you take the bacteria that is gaining entry inside urinary bladder as an invader, such as the one here, the bacteria does not look like this, but it's just that cartoon here to make you understand these facts. If you see this invader, the invader comes not like bare chest or free hands. The invader comes with a sword. Right? The invader comes with an armor on the legs. The invader comes with an armor on the chest. So it has a mechanism to protect itself. So it has a mechanism to hit you. It has a mechanism to protect itself from whatever you throw on the bacteria. So imagine in a similar fashion, the bacteria is an invader inside the urinary bladder and it has the swords, the daggers and the protective armor. Let us look at this bacteria and understand the, the strengths that the bacteria has. First of all, and I am saying this in reference to the commonest bacteria which causes urinary infection. This is E. coli. The pathogenic E. coli has a bacterial core and within the bacterial core it has what's called virulence plasmid. It's a genetic information which differentiates less pathogenic bacteria from more pathogenic bacteria. So this is genetic coding. So first of all, the invader is built strong. Now over the bacterial core, there is a capsule, bacterial capsule, which is wrapped over the bacteria and then it's a defense layer for the bacteria. Over the bacterial capsule, the bacteria has these, you will see these dots and these dots are sidrophores. They are actually pores in the capsule which allows the iron to move inside the bacteria. So iron is a nutrient as I said earlier to the bacteria. So there are gate, gateways through which the iron enters the bacteria, the sidrophores. And then on the capsule it has O antigen. We will talk about the O antigen shortly. Over this capsule the bacteria secretes what is called endotoxin what's called lipopolysaccharide layer and this lipopolysaccharide layer has very strong capability to generate response in the human body and it's called endotoxin. The bacteria has some brushy strengths coming out of the bacterial surface and they are called fimbria and then bacteria has a long tail which is called flagella. So that is how the E. coli looks. Now over this lipopolysaccharide layer, there is another layer of protein and which is called V1 capsule antigen. So you see a core, capsule, endotoxin layer and then another layer. So the bacteria is actually packed inside many layers. Now over this V1 capsule, some bacteria express antiphagocytic proteins. These proteins will destroy the, the macrophages. And then there is a certain amount of enterotoxin secreted by the bacteria which is all around the bacteria. So if you have understood the whole microanatomy of this E. coli and you now you know these small small properties of E. coli and you translate this into a model of invader. These fimbria on the bacterial surface are like sticky boots which allow this bacteria to gain foothold on the slippery umbrella cells. 
the fimbria are like legs which give to go their motility to swim inside the urinary gland the the capsule is like an armor of the bacteria and the enterotoxin which this bacteria throws in the bladder lumen is like a dagger thrown on the urinary gland and the endotoxin which is very powerful is like a sword of the invader right so when you have these bacteria inside the urinary bladder and the bacteria is an invader which has dagger and a sword which is capable of sticking on to any surface which is capable of running very fast inside the urinary bladder lumen obviously it will very fast multiply inside the urinary bladder and when uh, patients get a certain amount of bacterial count inside the urinary bladder they are said to be suffering from bacteriuria if they do not have symptoms they are called asymptomatic bacteriuria and asymptomatic bacteriuria is fine it does not need treatment in most patients except diabetics and immunocompromised individuals but if the bladder defenses are weak then this bacteriuria can become more serious how the bacteria attaches to urothelium and that's how it looks in in low power microscope and that's how it looks in high power microscope they're just actually glued to the urothelial surface that is the state which is called you know the bacteria getting attached to urothelial surface and that's all they just got attached they're not invaded inside the urinary bladder wall right so up to that state it is not a pathogenic infection up to that state it is not a clinical infection bladder has bacteria which are sitting on the bladder wall so thank you very much for being with me we're going to continue this topic in subsequent videos